This episode of the Soapcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Discord, the Four Horsemen, the Carry Steak, or the Ope, for those in Ohio, can't go wrong <laughs> with any great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. That is SLOOPCAST10. Be sure to check out all of the social media sites over at the Mad Canadian to check out where he and his food truck is heading next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the SLOOPCAST also brought to you by... The Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, Christmas. It's Christmas. It's almost Christmas. It's in that sort of Christmassy thing. We're starting to get like the early Christmas gifts going. And if you have a coffee snob in your life who is a coffee snob, let's let's just call it what it is. Uh, they probably want some Iron Bean Coffee. Amazing selections, light roast, dark roast. Uh, but if you don't necess- if you're not a coffee snob and you don't know way you- your way around all of that, you can get them a gift card. They have gift cards. Uh, they have a sampler pack, which will give your coffee snob, your, your familial or maybe friend uh, coffee snob, uh, uh, six different ones to choose from in the sampler pack. Or like I said, you can get them a gift card and let them buy their own damn coffee. You can find all of that and a lot more at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? Did we all make it through a through the bye week? <sighs> bye week surprise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the. Uh... Oh, you're going to need to mute that. Own needs muted. What are you doing, Kyle? We're professionals, damn it. <sighs> We're good. <laughs> We're good now? <laughs> We're good. All right. Let's get let's get into yeah. it. Yeah. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right. How are you, Jared? I have I was going to say I have no complaints, but that's not true. I have many complaints. Um, only only a couple of them actually relevant to this podcast, though. All uh, right. Complaint number one, second week in a row without Team Chaos. We haven't had a Team Chaos in... in any major one, major Team Chaos. I, I, I have not dropped a Team Chaos in two weeks. In, in the last two weeks. So I guess it's more like three weeks. The only thing we have even slightly resembling a team chaos was Notre Dame beating Clemson, but they're both undefeated playoff contending. That's not really chaos. That's a, that's definitely a loss for Clemson, but not not chaos by any means. I think all I think all weekend we only had one team, and we don't talk about this, Jared, but we have no. one team that was ranked that lost to an unranked team. Uh, and even that, I, I'm. <laughs> We'll, we'll talk about, I can't even name you who that is, which goes to show you how little I thought of whoever lost. <laughs> yes. All right. But, but we'll, Before, we'll get into that let's, later. Let's, let's talk about some Buckeye and college football news here. Uh, basketball. Yeah. Let's, I haven't talked about basketball much here, but let, let's start off the show with a little bit of basketball. Yeah. I know basketball and basketball news. It's been pretty, pretty bad for Ohio state with injuries yeah. and, players not being able to play and all that but got some good news though ohio state lands and i gotta adjust this no no one's there no no one sees the notes kyle you didn't have to fix it uh ohio state ohio state lands um 2022 prospect shooting guard rudy gale jr out of new york uh he is currently the 54th best prospect in the country Best player in the state of New York and the seventh best shooting guard for the 2022 class. Probably worth noting that he's, I think a lot of what I've seen is that people, he's ranked as a shooting guard. A lot of people are calling him a combo guard. Yes. 
Correct. So a shooting guard, point guard, point guard, shooting guard, whatever. But yeah, I this is a this is a really nice pickup. Uh, I I don't think we ever talked about. I think we talked about it in the Discord that Ohio State was uh, in very good shape here, and Ohio State ends up signing a really nice class. They even had a player um, reclassify to help because Kyle was, as Kyle was saying, there's been some rough news in the Ohio State basketball program as far as player injuries, transfer eligibility. Uh, so Ohio State does get a reclassification to to get some players in this year to help with this team. So uh, trying to... So some good news, some good, some bad news on the basketball front. Uh, I, if they continue on with the basketball schedule as they plan to currently, then I'm not sure how much basketball we're going to be able to talk this year with mm-hmm. them playing a lot of overlap with the college football season. But I don't know. I, I think Rick Pitino came out this week and sort of declared his wish that they would just sort of push everything back. I have no idea if that will be taken seriously, but yeah. But we are now, as this is being released on Monday, Jared, Mm -hmm. 16 days until opening tip off. Yeah. 16 days. So again, I really don't know how much basketball we're going to be able to cover this year with the football delay and the football overlap and all of that. But uh, if you want to talk to us about basketball, Discord.thesloopcast.com. Yes. All right. Uh, one other one other news here. We'll get more into this on Friday's episode. But as of we're recording this on Sunday afternoon, late afternoon, Ohio State 21 yeah. point favored over Indiana. Which goes to show you that no one, and when I say dislikes, I don't mean dislikes the Ohio state brand, but no one is as concerned or disgruntled with the current Ohio state play as Ohio state fans. Ohio state fans think very little of Ohio state right now. Not all of you. I don't, I don't mean to brush with such a, but yeah, it's, I don't know. Like you guys are being a little rough is, is I think what I'm trying to say. 21 points over undefeated top 10 Indiana. I just acknowledge the rankings again, Kyle, but it's Indiana. We must acknowledge the wow. fact that they are top 10. This is actually interesting. I saw this um, being posted on social media. The states of Indiana versus Ohio. Yeah. Two teams in Indiana combined 12 and 0. Yep. Two teams in Ohio combined 10 and 0. Yep. Let's just go at it. <laughs> The Ohio, the Ohio, Indiana, Indiana. Cincinnati versus Indiana, Ohio State versus Notre Dame. Let's go. I mean, Ohio State versus Notre Dame in the playoff feels potentially possible. Uh, They they both seem to be headed there. Uh, I don't know what bowl game a is even going to happen this year outside of the blue blood bowl games and B would host Indiana versus Ohio. (laughs) But that doesn't mean I don't want to see it. I just, I, I don't see how that happens. Yep. All right. Anything else before we go into um, some games here we're going to cover? Yeah, I, I think we're going to take, um, we're going to talk about the national scope here, but I think we also want to, because this is, I guess, sort of the, the midway point of the Big Ten season. So we want to take a look at the Big Ten. Uh, I But I think we're going to primarily talk about because we're bad people who enjoy the suffering of others, uh, Penn State and and Michigan, I think is who we're going to spend a lot of time on. So, Kyle, who do we want to talk about first? Well, the team that's talk- our rival or the team that's not our rival? Uh, let's let's go ahead and do the the team up north first. Okay. Yeah, not great. What what's going on in Ann Arbor? Yeah. Well. The first quarter says it all for the year. Wisconsin takes a easy 14 point lead in the first quarter. And it just, it's just funny still seeing it outgaining Michigan 
128 or 129 yards to one. Whew. How about this? Here's this, here's that for you, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Wisconsin scored four touchdowns before Michigan attained one first down. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes in D. 28 nothing at halftime. Michigan does get some third quarter points and then Wisconsin goes ahead and piles it on a little bit more. Uh, we, we talked about this game as a pick your quarterback game. Uh, I, I know Tom and I talked about that a lot on the morning scoop on Friday. And I know Kyle and I talked about it a lot on uh, during the sloop picks on this podcast on Friday. Pick your quarterback. And I do not believe for one second this narrative that Milton is getting any better. He's nope, he went he went he went five hundred. He threw fifty percent under and went and started zero and four with two interceptions. He started off his QB rating at negative one hundred. Oh, now that being said, <laughs> I didn't know it can go negative. <laughs> that being said, Mertz did not have a great game either. No, he was 12 for 22. So what is that? That's 55, 60, 60%-ish. 55. Like that. 55. 55. Okay. It's it's like 54 point, but yeah, it, it's like 55. But 127 yards, but they didn't really try to beat Michigan in the air, which I thought was a little surprising. They just pound them in the ground right through the trenches all game. 51 rushes, 300 in 41 yards. Well, it's worth pointing out that they were up 28 to nothing at halftime. So it's true. You don't do a lot of passing in the second half Mm -hmm. when you're up 28 to nothing. It's, it's just, it's very, what, what went right for Michigan? Because we saw Penn's, we're going to talk about Penn state a little bit more later. We saw Penn state get blown out against Indiana too. At least, at least Penn state made it a, a a game maybe maybe to say made it but they made it interesting against nebraska they they at least got did I, I think i said indiana before i meant to say nebraska they made it interesting against nebraska they got in there late they made nebraska fans sweat i know i follow a bunch of them on twitter i think i think two things um for michigan after those first two picks, yeah, no more turnovers. Then they have any more turnovers <laughs> for the rest of the game. Okay, and they only had four penalties. They they kept it pretty clean in in penalties. Man, we are we're reaching, Kyle. I know. <laughs> Wisconsin <laughs> only had one penalty all game, which is amazing. Being out for you haven't played in you haven't played a football game in three weeks. That is correct, sir. And you only had, you only caused one or your team only had one penalty for five yards. Yeah. Kudos to that, to those players and the coaching staff really getting on Wisconsin there. So, I mean, you have Wisconsin, no turnovers, only had one penalty there, man, that's, that's tough to take on Wisconsin. That's Wisconsin's definitely a threat. I know that Merce didn't look good here. But In defense. You look, at their, you look at there, they're not turning the ball over. They're not hurting themselves on drives or giving them a chance yep. to go down and make plays and push the ball down the field. It's a tough, this is a tough Wisconsin team that at the beginning of the year, we didn't, we didn't think highly of. So let me say this in defense of Mertz, who I am a big fan of. He, because the big 10 said he had to be out for like 21 days he didn't get to practice. He didn't even get to practice with his team until last week and not at the beginning of last week either. So I think only like a little days or something like that. Yeah. So let's, let's give Mertz a little bit of a little bit of room. Uh, Like he did not, as Kyle and I have both said at this point, he did not have a great game. I still think he's a tremendous quarterback. I still think Wisconsin is very dangerous. Mm Mm-hmm. But no, but this Michigan team. Oh, though. okay. Yeah. 
if if the butt is to trans trans <laughs> transition us back into Michigan, then that yes. is fine. Man, Michigan now one in three, and we said at the start of the the start of this Big Ten season, there is a good chance Michigan go four and four. Right, now, now now the thing is now, can Michigan get to four and four? No, I mean maybe. <laughs> I mean it's possible, but how much money? Kyle, straight up, mm-hmm. how much money would you be willing to bet that Michigan beats Rutgers? Man, sitting here now, <laughs> this is this is in Rutgers. It's a night game on BTN. Do do we have do we have a line on that yet? Do you know? Uh, I can I can look s- it up. You talk. I'll look it up. Let me let me see if this has okay. anything. Uh, not 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 that I see yet. Okay. They're giving they're giving Michigan a sixty three percent chance to win, but man, I wouldn't even give that. I think this is almost a, a toss up. Honestly, I would I would probably think right now the the line would probably be about four and a half to Michigan would be my guess. I, I may mean, be I may be way off, but I would say four and a half. I would not say that a, that Michigan versus Rutgers would be a toss up. Uh, I, I, I think I like that 60, whatever, what would you say it was? 63. Is that the ESPN game predictor? Yeah. I think that's about right. I, I, yeah, I would have probably said 60. Uh, cause, you, Cause you look at, you look at the, the stats here. Very, very similar. When you look at passing percentage wise, it's about the same. Both quarterbacks throwing interceptions. They're about one for one ratio and don't really have a, a true good running back to really rely on either. Yeah. Not, nothing's going right. And yeah, it's, it's all very, very, very bad. They beat and Minnesota. The la- they beat the Minnesota. Time, when's the last time we seen this from a Michigan team? They are uh, when, they I, were, are, when they were, when they were giving la- away tickets with the, purchase of a free Pepsi or free tickets with the purchase two, of a Pepsi. Oh, I'm Pepsis. sorry. Two Pepsis. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. When's two, the last time we've Pepsis. seen a Michigan team give up more yards than they actually achieve on offense? Uh, probably pretty frequently. Or you mean like for the entire season or? Yeah. On average. Oh, they are averaging allowing 426 yards per game. And on offense, they're doing 377. Yeah. That's almost, that's, that's about 50 yard difference there per game. I mean, they've, they've lost to Michigan state who is very bad. Very. They we'll lost to, in, soon. <laughs> they lost to Indiana and Indiana looks like a pretty decent team, but they, mm-hmm. they weren't in that game. Nope. The finals they weren't in this game. And then they lose to Wisconsin, who is now also top 10. And we're never in that game. They 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 could have been a MAC team. That's about what that looked like. That looked like Wisconsin playing a MAC team. That's that's that. It's just that simple. All right. So Kyle, can Michigan get to five hundred? Well, let's look at the rest of their schedule here. Next up, they have Rutgers that we mentioned. They should. They but should. I wouldn't right, put right, any right, money. Let's, let's give it to them. Let's give all it to right, them. Let's see. They are two and three. Okay. Penn State. Who knows? I how this, how is, could... this is in Michigan. The game's in Michigan. Does that matter? But I guess it didn't. I guess it didn't matter. I mean, look at this game here. The, I mean, generally speaking, especially in the Big Ten. Big Ten, no fans. Does it matter? Does is there a home field advantage in twenty twenty? I mean, it probably is. You get to sleep in your own bed the night before. Yeah. That's worth something, but I mean, it's it depends, not the depends same. On the, depends on the DJ and what he, <laughs> and what, what they're, what they're playing over the PAs. I mean, listen to um, the Ohio State Penn State game. Uh, that that line was constantly going. Yeah, but that that's that's normal. <laughs> All right, uh, let's not count that one because that one's a toss up. Two and three, Maryland. Three and three. 
let's let's just let's just give it to him because Maryland hasn't Maryland's been on and off. Uh I okay. You know, I don't think they win that game. I'm just okay. saying it right now, Kyle. I don't think they beat Maryland. And then Ohio State. They I've, would lose three. That's three four. Looking at Penn State, the Penn State game, and maybe Maryland too, but the, for for sake of arguing here, the Penn State game could be the difference between a losing season or a 500 season. I, I, I maybe I, I don't see them beating Maryland. I do not see them beating Maryland. And then they, brings up the, then brings up the next question here. Will Harbaugh's contract end early? Yeah. By the way, I said on several episodes of the podcast that Harbaugh's contract was ending at the end of this year. That is not true. Yeah, it's 2021. Next season. It ends at the end of next season. I said that several times and I was eventually, mm-hmm. thankfully, corrected. Uh, yeah. Will, it, will, they, can, will they actually cancel the contract this year and just say, hey, we're just going to cut our losses? I wonder... I wonder if Harbaugh is just going to find an NFL job. He's not going to get fired. His contract won't get terminated. They'll come to a a mutually agreed upon settlement for the remainder of the contract. And where would be a perfect place for him to go? Some NFL team. I don't know. You know, it'd be a perfect place. Or is that jets? (laughs) Can you imagine (laughs) Harbaugh with the New York media? Good God. I, yeah, I, I don't I don't know enough about all of the either. different details of what's going on in the NFL right now to, to have a strong opinion on that. Mm-hmm. But I think he goes to the I think he goes to the NFL and he and Michigan like mutually agree to part ways. Yep. All right. Kyle, I think the fan base are ready for that now. I think everyone is ready for that now. I think they were ready for that uh, after the after the Indiana game. Yeah. 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 It's, I I think they were ready for it after the Ohio state game last year. All right. Speaking of fan bases, not (laughs) wanting to get rid of their coaches or Penn state. Yeah. I tell you what state can we, can we do, can we split up our ad reads this episode? Let's do a quick ad read. I'll, I'll, I think I'll uh, do this one first. Yeah, go ahead. All right. We'll just do one of the ad reads. We'll come back to the next one at about the 40 minute mark. All right, let's hear from our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company. I'll let you know you can buy gift cards for Christmas. You can buy that sampler pack for Christmas. But let, let's talk about maybe not what you can buy, but why you should buy. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee company. They roast your coffee beans to order. They do not sit in a warehouse. They do not sit in the back of the shop. They do not sit in the back room at Kroger. They do not sit on the shelf for months and months and months and months on end. You place the order on the website. They roast it. They grind it if you ask them to. They st- they stick it in a box and they ship it directly to your house. You're getting the freshest possible coffee. And you can even get it even that much more fresh if you live or are willing to drive to Perrysburg, which is near Toledo, because you can also pick it up in store. You can avoid shipping costs and get it that much faster. And by the way, as far as shipping costs goes, free shipping over $50. Again, you're supporting an Ohio company. You're supporting a veteran owned. He's a uh, ex Marine company. Uh, all of the beans are organic USDA certified and fair trade certified, which if you know anything about the morality of coffee beans is a really big deal. So not only buy your coffee and have your coffee feel good, but also feel good about buying this coffee, both from a supporting Ohio, supporting a veteran and making sure you're not taking advantage of a third class country. Uh, all, it's just all good. All It's all integrity. It's all good. And by the way, it all tastes fantastic. You can find all of that and a lot more at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle, let's talk about Penn State. Penn State, Nebraska. Nebraska wins 30 to 23. And it was at halftime, it was a 27 to 6 uh, lead for Nebraska and Penn State slowly chipped out, chipped out that 
but it just wasn't enough in the end as Nebraska holds on. Yeah, Penn State made it interesting, which, by the way, Kyle, if we're going to talk about who's going to win Penn State versus Michigan, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to pick Penn State. And it's I've... based it's based on this. One of both of these teams went down big against opponents that they probably consider inferior, whether that be true or not. <laughs> well, but bo- both went down big against opponents that they probably considered to be inferior. One of these teams fought back. Mm-hmm. One of this, one of these teams still have some fight in them. Yeah. I, I there's a the big narrative uh, that Penn State has quit on James Franklin. Penn State has quit on James Franklin. I don't believe they have. I think that they were going to be down talent wise this year anyway. Then they lose a bunch of their running backs to injuries and other things. They lost their best defensive player who decided to opt out of this season. Their offensive line is garbage. Their quarterbacks are garbage. You're not going to win games when most of your best players don't play and your offensive line is bad and your quarterbacks are bad. You just Mm -hmm. are. And then, by the way, this weird COVID season, this 2020 season that we're in right now, they turned over four assistant coaches during the offseason. That puts you at a disadvantage considering everything that is and was 2020 in this football season. Yep. I'm not willing as far as from a program standpoint, the season's busted, but as far as a program standpoint, I'm not pulling the panic switch on, on Penn state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Penn state's had a pretty tough schedule. I mean, they played Indiana and Ohio state, two top 10 teams. Well, I guess you could say the same thing with Michigan as well, playing two top 10 teams right now as well. But at least with okay. Penn State, they they've made it competitive. I mean, look at look at three of their four losses. So minus the Ohio State game, Indiana, Maryland, Nebraska, all of them they've outgained their opponents. So that tells me that there's been some turnovers or bad red zone, terrible bad red zone, yeah, terrible bad red, red zone, zone probably too. Because you look at like this game here. Penn State outgained Nebraska 500 yard, 501 to 298. You look at the Indiana game, it was 488 to 211. The Maryland game, that one's closer. It was 434 to 405. So that one was pretty even. But all of these here had something very similar turnovers, bad red zones. Well, and just look at the Penn State Indiana game. Again, like we think Penn State, we now. You know, how things have shifted week one, we thought Indiana beating Penn state was a huge upset. Now it almost looks predictable, but let's remember how that game played out. Penn state wins that football game. If their running back doesn't score a touchdown in, in the end of regulation or towards the end of regulation, Indiana might have actually won that football game, depending upon how you feel about Penix reaching out and hitting the pylon with the football. Mm -hmm. They almost won that game. They looked good against Ohio State. Now, I never thought that they were actually going to win that game, but they didn't look bad against a really good Ohio State team. Maryland, I don't know what the hell happened there. Three turnovers is what happened. They were minus three in the turnover. And again, they're playing terrible in the red zone. Their quarterback is getting sacked constantly. And Clifford's very, very bad. Mm -hmm. And Levis is, I think, better. But I, I, I think that says more about Clifford than it says about Levis. You can. So I see people complaining about Penn State's play calling. I'm not going to defend their play calling because I really haven't watched Penn State with the amount of and with the analytical whatever to to really judge their play calling. What I will say Mm -hmm. is this is that if you don't have an offensive line and you don't have a quarterback and all of your running backs basically are out for one reason or another. 
I don't know what play you're going to call that's going to work. Mm -hmm. I, so I don't, I'm, again, I'm not going to defend their play calling, but one, your play calling, what's available to you is incredibly limited in what you think you can actually, actually execute. And even then the plays that you are including in the play calls, who's executing them. Yeah, they're yeah. Clifford is not executing them that well at all. Looking compared to all last year, he threw seven interceptions all of last year. Twenty three touchdowns, seven interceptions. This year, through four games, nine touchdowns, six interceptions. So he's pretty much almost totaled all of last year too in just four games. He's just not taking care of the ball and having an offer in the wind column so far shows it right there. Not yeah. taking care of the ball not executing on offense. Yeah. And again, if we're talking big scope, if we, if we pull out, I think that it would be a mistake, quite frankly, to fire Franklin pun really not intended. I promise it's, I think it'd be a huge mistake. I don't know that Penn state gets better unless they know they can get someone better. I don't think Franklin is a bad program coach. I do think that he probably needs, he's a bad in-game coach. I'll say that Franklin's a very bad in-game coach. I think he's done a good job building the Penn state program. I think he's a terrible in-game coach. I think he's a good culture builder. I think he's recruiting about as well as Penn state can hope to recruit right now. I mean, Ohio State loses guys to Penn State. I mean, look at Micah Parsons. Look at, well, there's issues with Micah Parsons. But look at Derek Davis Jr. Look at Owe. Yeah. There, there's uh, Noah Kane, a guy who they're missing a lot right now is a guy Ohio State wanted. Ohio State loses guys to Penn State in recruiting. They, they are doing well in recruiting. I, I like them from a culture standpoint. This year. All of the things this year has just been a little too much for them. That being said, they're, they're performing terribly right now. Who, I, man, I, I can't get over a, that they looked good against Ohio state and B they should have beat Indiana. They may be again, depending on how you feel about that play call did beat Indiana. Mm -hmm. it's wild I, I i don't i don't get it kyle do you yeah. have any do you have any theories any other theories as about what the hell's happening with penn state right now i don't think penn state i mean i don't think penn state's as bad as their record honestly they're, they're no not, as, you, as you mentioned no. they, they were one play away from from <laughs> winning several from beating indiana several one plays away <laughs> and nebraska it just not executing and multiple turnovers cost them. Wasn't one of those a, um, the Nebraska defense um, scored a touchdown. I can't remember if it was, there Nebraska was a, or if it was a different game. No, the, there was a scoop and score. Okay. If that's what you're asking. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's the difference right there too. I think Nebraska or Penn state is right there. And I think they have a lot better chance at going uh, 500 for the season compared to Michigan, even though Michigan has one more win than them currently. Yeah. Deontay Williams recovered a fumble and returned at 26 yards for a touchdown that put Nebraska mm -hmm. up 24 to three. Yep. All right. Uh, I do have Speaking one. Speaking of, oh, real, real quick, if we're talking about Penn State, Nebraska, Luke McCaffrey, McCaffrey, I don't, McCaffrey, uh, McCaffrey, I know I just stumbled, uh, is getting better. I think he's going to be very good. Uh, that's it. I think we can revisit when we revisit McCaffrey next year. Don't just be like, well, he was bad against Ohio State. No, he's getting better. So just keep an eye on McCaffrey. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. Um, I do have one uh, news here, though, Jared, and it might affect Ohio State this weekend. Okay. Because it's just this, coming in. Okay. We have 
news that is breaking for us the mac mac related mac school okay ohio and miami of ohio has been canceled and that's really close to columbus ohio right there is it I, I ohio don't... miami ohio i i i don't i but it's not like i don't know i i that i don't think that's cause for i the way you were coming at me with that i was afraid you were about to tell me that Penix tested positive uh, you know what no. i mean like you were yeah, coming yeah. at me real serious there for a second because there's a mm-hmm. conspiracy theory and i think someone asks us about it in the ask sloopcast but there's conspiracy theories out there we'll talk about it later during the ask sloopcast mm-hmm. section yeah that i'm not, not by it's not good news coming sunday already we just had just games just a day ago and it's already stuff coming out well except about it. this is essentially wednesday for mac because they've playing all That's their true. games. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So right. this is mid this is midweek for them. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Uh let's let's talk let's let's do a quick overview of the Big 10 right now. Quick overview. All right. Really quick. Okay. The Hoosiers are number 1 in the East. If you go by more wins, yes. Well, that that literally yep. is how the rankings work. Mm-hmm. The Terrapins are third in the East, even if you want to say like Indiana's 1A and Ohio State's 1B. Third place, the Terrapins. Fourth place is a tie between Michigan State, Rutgers, and of course, your fighting Wolverines. Unless you want to start talking about tiebreakers, but... I I, I don't care that much. They're all one and three. I don't care about (laughs) tiebreakers at one and three. Yes. At the Western Division, just as we all predicted, Northwestern is 4-0. and Wisconsin, four weeks into the season, is 2-0. and And I, the Gophers are 1-3. and Purdue, 2-1. and Iowa, 2-2. Two and two. Uh, So disappointed in the Gophers this year. Really thought this was going to be the year for them. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you're but, fighting a lion eye who actually are a fighting. And that's not me being clever this time. You're fighting a lion. eye one and three Kyle, which one of these is not like the other. Uh, that would be the big offer with the Nittany lions. I, I said it several times on the morning scoop on Friday that we know two things in the big 10 Ohio state's good and Illinois bad. Well, guess what? Illinois has a win, which is more than they can say in happy Valley. Yes. All right, Kyle. Uh, Mad Canadian read? Yes. Let's talk about the Mad Canadian. Christmas is coming around the corner here, and the Mad Canadian has put out a magic trick Uh-oh. in his in his uh, laboratory. He's his got lab, the, his, his lab, his gift shop. His gift shop, yes. He's, he's, he's got a Santa beard. It's not, it's not white, but it's, it's majestic. It is very majestic. <laughs> he has three new gift sets over at the Mad Canadian on starting Monday. Hopefully he has it there Monday, but he told us on Monday. <laughs> uh, he says, save some money on the barbecue in your life for Christmas. They have three gift sets on the website. He has one called Just Send It, which has the S&P Bud, the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked. You can this, go with the you can go with the sweet heat, which has the four horsemen, Discord, two border, and the old fashioned, or Jared, probably our favorite, the whole <laughs> hog, which is one of each of the fourteen seasonings. Oh my that Canadian goodness! Canadian has right now. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So uh, I pricing I, pricing's on on each gift gift set will be listed on the website. He, he hasn't listed it for us yet, but check out his website, the mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the mad Canadian BBQ.com to check, to check out those pricings. And don't forget about sloop cast 10 to get 10% off the whole hog or the just one hog, bottle. Yes. It doesn't matter. So, one bottle, 10% off the whole hog, 10% off. It doesn't matter. Save 10, 10 extra percent off with Sloopcast 10. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, he's got your butt covered for Christmas. Kyle, it feels a little dirty to be doing Christmas 
ads already. Dude, there's Christmas everywhere. Right I know. Now. Everybody, everybody. I am such year. I am such a wait for Thanksgiving guy, but we're we're talking about buying things and shipping things, so you have to. Mm-hmm. But I'm such a don't don't bring that to me until after Thanksgiving type person. But mm-hmm. whatever. It's I understand I, there's shipping and fulfillment involved. We have to worry about this stuff now. And I've seen many, many trees and homes already. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Let's get to some Ask Sloopcast questions. Kyle, we have a, a new mini feature in the Ask yes. Sloopcast. Yes. Before I get to our listener questions, let me ask you, the listener, a question myself here. So our question of the week. So speaking of Penn State and Michigan in our earlier segment, name a Wolverine player, current or former. No, no players, just Wolverines. Oh, just Wolverines? Okay. Just Wolverines. Any Wolverine. Any Any Wolverine. Wolverine. Coach, player, anybody. Our answer. That you actually like. Our answer. We'll get the obvious one out of the way. We love him. We base our opening off of him as Gus Johnson. We love Gus Johnson. We forgive him for being a Wolverine and for naming his dog Bo. We forgive you, Gus Johnson. We like you that much. So, yeah, Gus Johnson is, uh, I think, the Sloopcast pick. But who's your favorite Wolverine? Let us know in the Discord, on Twitter, email, YouTube. YouTube. YouTube comments, wherever you want. All right, Kyle. Now let's get into the Sloopcast questions for us instead of by us. All right. We got quite a few here. So Duncan asks, is it just me or have there been a lot more procedural penalties than normal? Yeah. Lack of practice time during the off season, lack of spring practice, lack of spring games. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is why you also see everyone's the big 12 right now. It just, (laughs) there's, It's harder to play defense without practice than it is to play offense without practice. Mm -hmm. So that's why the offenses are so far ahead right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right. One other question from, from Duncan. Let's assume the team up North finds their miracle urban Meyer caliber coach. Okay. How many years until the team up North becomes a real threat to win the game and the big 10. So let's say that they have an urban Meyer whether it's just like clone urban Meyer, except make him blue. I'd say if he's really, really actually urban Meyer caliber two years, Mm -hmm. uh, that that's you at least get your guys from a recruiting standpoint in there as, as sophomores. Yep. I think realistically, probably more like three years, because that's how recruiting classes work. I get so urban Meyer, when urban Meyer showed up to Ohio state, he fixed the recruiting class before it ended, which a only urban Meyer could do to fit, turn around a recruiting class in the matter of months. Only Mm -hmm. urban Meyer could do that. And B, I don't remember if I said one or a the first time. So I'm just going to go and B you, that's also, not really possible anymore because of the early signing period. The early Mm -hmm. signing period happens before the most of the coaching carousel. Yeah. So it's actually probably three. I've talked to myself out of two. It's three years. Mm -hmm. And and what, as much as we enjoy watching Michigan struggle over the past, it's been a while. It's, It's been, it's been a good while. Yeah, it has. I don't really think it's so much on the coaches or the the players themselves because recruiting wise, they're there. They should be able to win and compete every year. Not 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 being able to win the Big Ten every year, but every once in a while. Sure. So let's let's go let's go to Urban Meyer. Yeah. On his three reasons why he thinks there thinks what the issue is at Michigan here. I so think he, he, he was speaking, was he speaking specifically of Michigan or was he speaking, I think generally it's in general, but in yeah. related to Michigan, but in general, three, three issues here. One, it, one, a trust issue, 
there's there's no trust between the coaches and the players and the players to the coaches. There's just or no the players trust to the all. players or the coaches to the coaches. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Uh, the second thing is it's it's a dysfunctional work environment. There's it's just a very toxic environment. A lot of anger, a lot of frustration because you're not winning. Things aren't going your way. You're like, oh, we're Michigan. We should be able to to be able to defeat uh, Indiana and Rucker teams without breaking a sweat. And when it's not happening, there's a lot of we heard a lot of reports in in 2011, which we referred to as the lost season on this podcast between. Basically, Luke Fickle and Mike Vrabel, who were sort of the new coaches, uh, you know, Luke Fickle being the head coach and him bringing in Vrabel and then sort of Trestle's guys and how there was a lot of differing opinions and differing attitudes in there. So, you know, you look at Ohio State's one bad season in a very long time. And there's a lot of, of rumor and hearsay, but a lot of it about how dysfunctional the coaching staff was between like Trestle's guys and not Trestle's guys. Mm-hmm. Yep. And how, by the way, how hard it was for Luke Fickle to work with a coaching staff that he did not put together. Yes. Yep. And then the third reason is selfishness. And this is more of, um, you can kind of look at this with, um, with uh sean wade in a way he talked about that he's wanting to make the interceptions instead of just doing the breakup yeah. passes do doing the doing the ugly thing doing the ugly work yeah to make your team better i think we run, run some um pass blocking for running backs um running being able to block uh the corners as a wide receiver jk dobbins talked about this as a junior about his sophomore year mm-hmm. where he yeah. said one of the reasons why he had a bad sophomore year, but had such a good freshman and junior year was because he was trying to break big runs too often. And he was trying to like win the job and win carries over Mike Weber instead of just doing his job. Yep. So those are the three reasons. Trust, dysfunctional and selfishness. Yeah. So, uh, how many, if, if they had an urban Meyer three years, do you think that's what it would take to fix I think Michigan three years, right now? Three years is a good number Two, If they have really good recruiting class, they, they, good players there. I, I really don't think that they, they do. And the guys, yeah. cause they're not recruiting at where they were a couple years ago. I think the, the, the news is broke on, on what Michigan is now. And they're not really getting their top tier guys anymore. And even the top tier guys who are still in and around the program who were top, they've not been, they're not going to reach their potential because of the bad coaching staff. Yep. Yep. All right, Kyle, this one is from a new patron, a new official sloop cat. Uh, He goes by Maxter mind. Mastermind? Mastermind. I like it. Uh, Has there ever been a coach that's been more loved, that's been loved more for not winning a natty than Bo Schembechler? That's a a frequent gripe I have on this show. The, The love, the admiration, Gus Johnson, who named his dog Bo, for Bo Schembechler when he's the third best coach, in my opinion, in Michigan history. Third. Yost is your number one. Carr is your number two. That, and that's not debatable to me. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. Yeah. I I can't really think of one either. It's, I mean, I understand the reasons why they love, why they love Bo, but in the grand scheme of things, shouldn't be as much as others. It, it's really just because of he and Cooper's rivalry. I think they're defining a thing they love. Mm-hmm. Did I say Cooper? You did say oh Cooper. Oh my God. <laughs> what is, oh, punish me. Um, Woody, of course, Woody Hayes. I think it was such a 
thing between Woody Hayes and such a rivalry, the thing people have written many books about. And I, I think that they just sort of like, oh, high State had Woody Hayes and we had Bo Schembechler. And they're defining, like I said, their guy based off of where Ohio State mm-hmm. was at the time, which yeah. says a lot about this rivalry. Mm-hmm. All right. This one's from Cooper. How does the recruiting ban extension affect the two Washington boys, JT and Emeka? I first and foremost, these I still I'm like 95 percent sure with Emeka and 90 percent sure with JTT that they're coming to Ohio State. This might affect their timeline. The I think it was the Under Armour All-American game has been canceled. I don't know where the what used to be the Army All-American. I think it's something different now. I don't mm-hmm. think it's sponsored by the army anymore, but what, whatever that game is, I not sure where that's standing right now. I, I still am hearing. And by hearing, I mean, reading on the Buckeye scoop message board. I'm still hearing that JTT does not plan. He has never planned on signing during the early period that he's going to wait until actual national signing day but that Emeka does want to sign during the early signing period. And now they're just not going to get to do their trips and that sucks. And that's awful. Uh, but that's 2020, but I, I don't, it might affect the timeline, but I don't think it affects their ultimate decision. I still am rolling hard with these guys coming to Ohio state. Yes. All right. Uh, next question from Brawley. Is it better to have the extra week to game plan for Indiana while they couldn't focus on us? Or is it worse since we didn't have to play up game against Maryland? Uh, I'll take the, I'll take the rest and I'll take Ryan day and the staff having extra time to focus on Indiana. Yeah. I'm going to definitely lean on that more, but it's, I wish that we had an extra game to see what fixes they we're planning to fix on the secondary I'm mean, against, I, against Maryland. They apparently did a pretty intense one-on-one scrimmage on, on Saturday. Okay. Uh, who is the worst quarterback in the big 10 East <laughs> and why is it between Milton and Clifford? <sighs> uh, Milton and Clifford, Clifford and Milton, by the way, awful names. Milton and Clifford. Did these guys play football in the fifties? Clifford's not even wearing red. No, (laughs) no, he's not. I think it's Clifford. Um, I, man, I, the quarterback whose name is it? I forget his name. He's the quarterback for Rutgers. I keep, I want, it looks, it's not Vrabel, but it looks like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget his name. I All I can think of is Vrabel. Uh, he's not any good either. We just don't talk about it because it's Rutgers. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to roll Clifford. Clifford's probably not even going to have a job. Vadral? Vadral. No, Vadral. Vadral. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, uh, <laughs> Clifford. Next. I don't think he's even going to have a job next week. And I think Milton will. All right. Um, one more question from Brawley. What's the best game to look forward to from a national scope for the rest of the season? I think it's Ohio State, Indiana. We've already had Notre Dame versus uh, Clemson. That was a big game from a national perspective. And again, I assume we're not counting the uh, conference championship games because like Bama, Florida will be huge, but we aren't counting that. Uh, I, I, Florida's going to win the East. Bam is going to win the West. I don't, I mean, 2020 is 2020 and chaos happens and so on and so forth. But, uh, I feel like our playoff teams, although there's more than four of them are pretty set. I just don't see any of those teams losing a game that they should lose. Again, anyone can lose a game. They shouldn't lose. Yeah. Next, so looking forward here, Jared, to like kind of jump into Friday's episode. This weekend's games, yeah, we have some pretty good ones. We have some really good ones. 
I uh, were you just going to leave that tease there? I thought mm-hmm. you were going to yep. keep going. Nope. Okay. All right. We have no. some really good ones next okay. weekend, especially after abysmal set of games last weekend. This one is really good. Yeah. The last two weeks have been stinkers. Last week was a real stinker. Mm-hmm. Well, we at least had Clemson Notre Dame two weeks ago. And we at least yeah. had an Ohio state game two weeks ago. Yeah. This last week I may or may not have fallen asleep watching Notre Dame, Boston college. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Austin formation. Oh, he had, he had a lot of questions here. Um, let's try to knock these through here quickly. Uh, with COVID obviously on everyone's mind, I think it is less likely to see a coach get fired with that being said, would it take this season to see Franklin hairball go Would hairball just be given one more season and his contract run out. I've, I've given my opinion on how I think that's going to play out. And I I'm of the opinion that Franklin should not lose his job for this season for reasons I've laid out. Kyle, do you, any, Mm -hmm. any disagreement with any of that on the stuff I've already said? No, I don't, I don't really have any, anything else. that's pretty dead on. Thank you. All right. Next question. Uh, If I told you Indiana didn't turn the ball over once, threw over 300 yards and ran for 200, what percentage would you give Indiana to win over Ohio State? Are these numbers still not enough to beat Ohio State team with probably the best offensive attack in the country? 500 yards and no turnovers. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot. And of course, I think it matters a lot when in the game that happens. Mm -hmm. And of course, as we've talked about with Penn state, what you do in the red zone. Uh, I mean, what percentage chance do I still give Ohio state to win? Probably still like 66. So giving Indiana 33% chance to win. Yeah. uh, With those stats as a given. Mm -hmm. And, And we've seen too, and I, and we'll cover it more on Friday. Indiana's defense, not all that good. No, they, they it, just, no one's defense is good this year. No one's. Mm, yeah. There's two te- There's two types of teams. Teams who've been exposed on defense and teams who have mm. not played a good offense yet. This, this game is, and I kind of jokingly said this uh, in our Discord, uh, the question was thrown around, how, how do you stop like Florida's offense? The Florida's offense, you can you can really argue that uh, that Florida's offense is the best offensive attack in the country the way the way they've been playing and I I kind of half jokingly but probably in all seriousness yeah the way to the way to stop or beat Florida is with your own offense and yeah. that's exactly what Indiana will have to do here how State's going to score points they're going to be able to move the ball efficiently Indiana is just going to have to respond friend of the podcast Tony Gerdeman said on Twitter. Uh, about Notre Dame that they're very good, but their past defense won't hold up against Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, who again, they did remember they did not play mm-hmm. uh, Mac and uh, Mac Jones. Yeah. And I responded to him going, whose will will anyone's mm-hmm. yeah. and the answer is no. Yep, Exactly. All right. Uh, let's see. Is there any silver of a chance Olave will come back next year? No. No. I don't think so. Uh-uh. I don't think it's the way he's been playing. He's just, he really solidified himself as one of the best receivers in well, the country. And then also add the fact that Justin Fields will also leave. Yeah. So if you're Olave, the only way, the only way Olave would consider coming back is if Justin Fields also came back. And that's mm-hmm. not happening. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Uh, what is your favorite Thanksgiving side dish? One, to make, and two, to eat. Side dish. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm real basic on my side dishes. I like, I like rice. <laughs> I like mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Um, I actually made some mashed potatoes recently, like some homemade ones, because I had some potatoes that I just needed to, to, to mm-hmm. do something with. And I did like, it was probably like two thirds sweet potato and one third russet potato. And I just mixed it all together and it was, it was really good. That's, that's it. That's all I have. Oh, and yeah, to eat seasoned with S and P bud. Yes. To eat. Definitely. You can have a really good 
seasoned mashed potatoes. That's always really good. And to make, I'm a very simple guy. I don't like to take a long time to, to make food. Uh, so anything easy to make. <laughs> so Kyle also says mashed potatoes, but the instant <laughs> ones. Uh, let's see here. Um, I know it's a long ways away and I'll work, work and it'll work itself out. But let's say this happens. Undefeated Ohio State, undefeated Oregon, one loss Clemson, one loss Notre Dame, who loses to Clemson in the title in the ACC title game. One loss Florida, one loss Alabama, undefeated Cincy, undefeated BYU, and one loss Oklahoma State. Who's in? Jeez. Um... <laughs> well, definitely Ohio State and Florida. I, I would definitely put those two right there. Ohio State, Florida. Clemson. I would, I would put Clemson and Oregon then. I, I would put your four I would put your four conference champions in right there. If it's undefeated Oregon, undefeated Ohio State, and then Clemson is your ACC champ, Florida is your SEC champ. The more I'm looking at that, I, I think that's I think that's it. Right well, there. and that's also just the way for the committee to get away without any real scars is just to put the four conference mm. champions in. Yes. Yeah. So I agree with Kyle. All right. Cool. All right. It's hard. It's hard well, to see a playoff without Bama this year because I, I legitimately think they're one of the best three teams in the country. But given what has been laid out there, I I think Kyle's right. Mm-hmm. All right. And our, our good moderator at the Discord asks us, Jared. His name's Jug, or at least that's his name in Discord land. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he wants to be saying his real name or not. We'll just so, call him Jug. So we'll call him Jug. Mod Jug. <laughs> Who will win a 50-yard foot race? Jared or Kyle? I want to say that Mod Jug sounds like a, a character from The Mandalorian. Mod Jug. Yes. Okay. Uh, Kyle would win. I am not a, I am not a fast individual. I'm just, I'm, I am not. I did the, I did the hurdles in high school. So I played offensive line in high school. <laughs> yes. I've lost weight. <laughs> and yes, I've gained weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. National, Real- national scope, uh, yeah, lightning got- round. Lightning round. All right. Um, let's see. Iowa beats Minnesota 35 to seven. Did not see it being that big of a. Yeah. <laughs> bottom big of the of a... bottom, bottom of the lake boats at the bottom of the lake. That's all I got. Yep. Cincinnati, uh, defeats the pirates. No surprise. 55 to 17. And we have a very salty, uh, pirate head coach who got upset at fickle for going for it on a, doing a fake punt yeah well i got a salute pick so that's all that matters by the way i defeated cousin jay i didn't mean to rhyme there oh I but didn't either e- way <laughs> i didn't even look i didn't even look at it but either way either way we're moving on uh, i did kyle and you didn't i beat him on a tiebreaker by the way nice i went right. uh, i went five and two and uh had the tiebreaker uh, I, he, I he also went five and two i think you had four yeah, four, you went four okay. and three. That's reasonable. Yeah. Everyone had a really good week in the slew picks this week. Yes. Uh, the leaders was Tanner, Abandoned Ohio Cemetery, and Clint at six. There you go. All right. Uh, North Carolina defeats Wake Forest after being down 21, 59 to 53. Wow. That's a high scoring game there. I, what Kyle said. All right. Uh, <laughs> Miami comes back to beat Virginia Tech 25 to 24. This is our only one of our, I think one of two only real chances for team chaos this weekend. And yes, Miami pulled it out. Let's see. Uh, West Virginia defeats DCU 24 to six. Uh, Indiana defeats Michigan state 24 to nothing. Big Michigan zero for state, Sparty. Michigan state bad. Yeah. And Kyle just got done telling us, telling us that the Indiana defense is bad. Well, shut out. And I know <laughs> it's Michigan state. I get it, but still shut out. The Thundering Herd defeats Middle Tennessee 42 to 14. That moving up the ranks. Yep. Uh, moving up the ranks too. Liberty defeats Western Carolina 58 to 14. Woohoo. Woohoo. Illinois defeats Rutgers 23 to 20. 
uh, you know what? Maybe I'm feeling better about Michigan beating Rutgers this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> the Raging Cajuns. Still, I, still I, don't, to... I don't. I don't know why you included this one. I don't either. Okay, <laughs> Notre Dame defeats Boston College forty-five to thirty-one. I wanted that to be closer. I was yeah. so sure. That's one of the sloop picks I missed. I wanted it to be mm-hmm. closer. Uh, you, you, Boston College. Listen up, Boston College guys. Don't kick field goals. Just, yeah. just stop. No, no more, no more field goals. Stop. Yep. Oh man, this this one came down to the wire. I remember going back and forth at the very end here, but USC. Tops Arizona 34 to 30. Yeah, this is another game. It, Arizona could have broke up a pass that would have ended the game and it got over the defenders by millimeters. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, Northwestern saying undefeated beating Purdue 27 to 20. Minnesota plays, or excuse me, Northwestern plays Wisconsin, Wisconsin. this weekend. Ohio State plays Indiana this weekend. We could be deciding the Big Ten championship game this weekend. Could be. The Ducks. Yeah. Going 2-0 and over Washington State, 43-29. to On their way. Mm-hmm. Mentioned how great their offense is and showcase here, both their offense and how bad the defense is as well. But Florida beats Arkansas 63 to 35. Kyle Trask had a Justin Fields-esque game. Uh, it's six, I think it was six touchdowns. He only, he had, it was, I think it legitimately was one of those Justin Fields-esque games where he had more touchdowns mm-hmm. than in, incompletions. Yeah crazy and it's not to say arkansas is any good but kyle trask is very very good yeah and like i mentioned before like at the very beginning of the episode probably if you want to consider team chaos but we're not going to though but tulsa defeats smu 28 to 24 and i'm sure at this point tulsa will be ranked but we don't talk about that um aren't these numbers on your graphic already updated i don't think so okay. no because indiana shows here indiana's 10 but they've okay. moved up to ninth so. okay that's fine no. why are we talking about rankings i don't know but that's it that is that okay. is all the games here and all the other games i don't care yeah <laughs> by the way to revisit brawley's question national scope game northwestern wisconsin and that's why i said next weekend some good games yeah. Just just so I'm clear, Bama and Florida do not play each other in the regular season. Is that correct? I don't believe so. I'm going to going to double check, but nope. Florida plays LSU as a cross. So no. Yeah. Uh, most in, most national scope interesting game left in the regular season. I think. It really might be Ohio State, Indiana. I think that's like... It really could be this weekend. Yeah. Really could, because I'm trying to look at other games Bama, upcoming. Bama upcoming should run. Year, I just don't really see anything. Again, honestly. talking purely regular season. not not No conference championship game. Purely regular season. Ohio State should run the table. And their biggest obstacle is this weekend. Bama should run the table. Clemson should run the table. Notre Dame should run the table. Florida should run the table. And again, should, 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 should in 2020 is a year of chaos. So who knows? But I don't think there's any real huge marquee matchups left. No, we're, we're coming down to the, we're coming down to the end here with some of the other conferences while, while the big 10 and even the PAC 12 is getting about halfway through their season now yeah more 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 so the big 10 for halfway unless we're talking about wisconsin in which case not so much yeah well still halfway because those games were canceled not postponed yep. thank you kevin warren yep hashtag fire kevin warren always and forever all right and that is all that is all for today's episode awesome i want to encourage everyone to check out the master link the sloopcast.com uh all that is is a what, what you call a campsite link uh that links you to other things so go ahead and check that out check out our merch store kyle uh the ohio state university because i i think because i wore it on the morning show with tom or uh 
took down claiming rights over our Ninja Turtle merch. Not Nickelodeon. Ohio State. It's all it said was the Buckeye Sloopcast. Hmm. And it was a ner- Ninja Turtle font and layout. What right? Ohio State University. If Nickelodeon did it, we could have conversations. What right? Ohio State, do you have to claim that one? For God's sakes, look at this poster right here, Ohio State. Brutus is literally in it. You left this one up. If you took this one down, do you see this poster? If you took this one down, I'd get it. I'd say, you know what? Good on you. I got away with that one. Really? You're going to take out my Ninja Turtle shirt? So go get uh, go get my merch while you still can. Especially this one, because now that I've pointed it out, Ohio State will probably be coming for it next. So get my merch while you still can. <laughs> uh, so yeah, get it, get it, get it while you can. Uh, make sure to join our Discord server. We're growing every week. Uh, it was very, very busy this weekend. I had a lot of fun in the Discord server. If you notice me tweeting less, it's because I'm spending more time in the Discord server because uh, Twitter is increasingly toxic. So I'm spending more time in the Discord server. So, it, but we are active in it. It's not a thing we set up and walk away from. You will have conversations with Kyle and I in the Discord server. I, I promise you that. And then even more so if you're in the premium channels and you can get into the premium channels by signing up at our Patreon and you can get there, patreon.thesloopcast.com. You can get to the Discord, Discord dot the sloopcast.com discord if you have never used it is basically i call it a hybrid between a message board and a group text that that's how i describe it it's an app you download on your phone uh after you do that go to a web browser type in discord dot the sloopcast.com you'll create an account you'll get access we'll say hi to you we'll have a conversation it'll be fun um and I, Kyle, I think that's, that's just make it, like I said, just check out the master link. And then from the master link, you'll find all the other things. Mm-hmm. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner for this week? Um, not really. I know I mentioned, I think last episode, but the crew plays this weekend. Okay. They start off the um, MLS playoffs. So I'll have more information on, on Friday's episode, but the crew. You, you do have some. Playing this weekend. You do have some sad news from. Oh yeah. My. My high my high school lost to very very good cold water team. A um, couple of injuries, unfortunate for Columbus Grove, but cold water just the better team overall. As yeah, the we, Bulldogs losing the state semifinals. Th- there wasn't a ton of hope going in. No, cold water is just they're just a really really good. There's a reason they they were ranked number one in Division Six. Yeah, for a reason. Yep, yep. But, a good season. A good season for the dogs. Yeah, and I think we were talking about this on the Friday episode. In a season in which a lot of high school players only got to play in a handful of games in a hyper shortened regular season, I I think it's reward enough to have gotten to play some semblance of a full season. So congrats to the Columbus Grove Bulldogs for doing that. I know um the St. Clairsville Red Devils, I think, got knocked out the week previous. But again, they, they, they got into the playoffs. Everyone got into the playoffs, but they won a few games and got something closer to a regular season. So congrats to them as well. Yep. All right, and that is all. All right, everyone. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band. I'm. They are from Columbus, Ohio. I almost said Cleveland. They're from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, they are called the Soul Monsters. Uh, make sure to check the show notes for a link to their stuff. Uh, as well as a uh, the name of the song and a link to the song. You can, like I said, find all that down in the show notes. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, Kyle, support your, I don't know, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Soul Monsters. Sup, YouTube. Join the Discord because I don't want to be on Twitter. <laughs> that's, that's we have we have free channels now. We have premium channels. We also have free channels. The free channels are growing in size. Uh, it's not 
as active as I want it yet, but it's growing in activity. We have some fun bots. Uh, we have the helmet sticker game, which it's a lot of fun. What's that? I said it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it shouldn't be fun, mm-hmm. but it is. It's a lot. I suck at it. Next weekend, Jared. Yeah. Or this next weekend's game three. Three top twenty-five matchups. Oh wow, mm-hmm. Kyle, you're you're talking quietly, and that's causing the noise. Okay, better, better, better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, let's rejoin our audio listeners. All right. Oh, wait, before we do that, we have an Apollo sighting. Oh, hello, Apollo. All right, we're going to do this ad read with Apollo on the lap. I'll go first. Want to once again thank the Soul Monsters for ending today's episode. And I would like to once again thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. All right. So first we did uh, talking about some stuff you can buy there. And then we talked about why you should buy there. So let's talk about some specific coffees. I think last episode I talked about the dark roast. So let me let me talk about a medium roast. Let's talk about the Rage Against the Dying Light. It has notes of cherry, milk chocolate, orange, and a slight hint of rose petal. Uh, that's a great medium roast. The Ride or Die uh, is a gentle and distinctive version. And you can actually see uh, this is a big bag of the Ride or Die. I've not opened it yet, but there it is. Uh, it's a Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee bean with superb smoothness and flavor. And Kyle, one of my personal favorites from the from the sampler pack that I uh, have uh, opened and drank so far would be the cast iron. Uh, it's once again, a medium roast that is 100% single origin Honduran Arabica beans. Uh, if you don't know anything about coffee, that might not mean anything to you except for the fact that it's real good. It's real good. It's real good. So yeah, you can buy that or you can buy some flavored coffees. There's the carrot cake, the blueberry, the mint chocolate chip, and like I said, there's uh, lots of great coffees. And if you don't know what to buy the coffee snob in your life, you can always just get them a gift card or the sampler pack. And you can buy all of that stuff at ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloopcast was also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mentioned in the middle of the episode, I'll mention it again here at the end here. Mad Canadian has cooked up some special gifts for your barbecuer in your life. He has three sets, such as the Just Send It, which includes the S&P Bud, the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked. I would say that's a great starter set. That is that's fantastic. Those yes. are probably three of his, or excuse me, four of his most versatile spices. So if you're someone who does a lot of different things, or if you're a very basic cooker, if you're not someone who necessarily does a lot of spice or so on and so forth, that's a great starter set of very versatile spices. Yeah. This next one, I would almost call this like your wing set. He, he oh. has this called the, the sweet heat Four horsemen discord two border and the old fashioned. Yeah. That's a, you know, that's a great point, Kyle. That's a, that's a wing set. If you're someone who likes some spicy wings, yeah, I, I agree. That's a wing set. Mm-hmm. Or you can get the whole hog, the, <laughs> whole four, the whole 14 seasoning package here. One of each bottles of the seasonings he has as Jared tries to can't hold all the seasonings. <laughs> uh, only people on YouTube could see that. <laughs> Check out those three gift sets at the madcanadianbbq.com for prices as he hasn't listed them just yet, but check out the madcanadianbbq.com for the pricings and to order any of those sets. Be sure to also use promo code sloopcast10, that's sloopcast10 for 10% more off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered for Christmas. Hey, YouTube. Once again, my face is a playlist if you want to listen to more episodes of the Sloopcast. 
Kyle's face is the subscribe button. It's either subscribe to the Buckeye Scoop or subscribe to us, depending upon where you're watching it. We don't care where you watch it, but it would be really cool if you subscribe to both. But again, watch it wherever you want, as I am just trying to kill time while I put all those bottles down. So Kyle's face, subscribe, my face, playlist. See you all Friday. Peace, everybody.